Hi, welcome to Health Talk. I am Health Talk with Dr. Akram. I am Akram. In this program, we'll be talking about all kinds of different health issues with different experts in the field. But today, we're going to talk something really important. This is diet. What is the best diet for you? There are hundreds of diets. If you Google, there are lots of them there. But it's quite difficult to find what you like. Um, from my search, I found there's something called keto diet, low carb diet, intermittent fasting, vegan, Atkins, paleo, kaleo, Weight Watchers, Slimming World, and meal replacement shakes. What are you going to choose? I think it's a difficult choice. That's why I thought I'll bring some specialists here and they have gone through themselves in this big search and they have found some success. And we're going to talk all about diet and how you can reduce your weight and this is the best time because we had christmas we had new year lots of parties i think we have enjoyed we put on a little bit of weight time to get rid of it and how we can get rid of it and that's what we're going to talk today and um, today we have in our show two specialists dr raisa islam She's a doctor working in trauma and orthopedics. And uh, Ms. Damini Lalchan, who is a PhD student in psychology. And they both had lost an immense amount of weight. And I think you must be really eager to listen to them and see what they say. Welcome to the show anyway. Anyway, Raisa, thank you very much for being in our show. Thank you for having me. Damini. Thank you for having me once again. Excellent, guys. How are you feeling today? Um, a bit nervous to talk about because usually I don't really talk about the weight loss. The weight so, loss. So, um, yeah, no, a bit nervous, but excited to share and I hope it helps some people. It's fine. You're doing really well. Thank you. And people are already loving you. They're sending out messages. <laughs> They're going to call us soon, right? Okay. How are you feeling, Damini? about this well a little nervous but well positive overall <laughs> by the time we start the show mm -hmm. you're going to fly through girls don't worry oh let's hope <laughs> it's very yes okay let's talk about you what do you do um, so I'm currently a doctor at the Prince Alexander Hospital and I work in trauma and orthopedics which is in my opinion the best specialty I really enjoy it um, Speaking of working in a hospital, got my COVID vaccine. You had your COVID yes, vaccine? You first can tell dose. about it. Uh, well, it was quite quick, quite simple. I didn't have any of the strange side effects that can, some people are getting. But um, yeah, no, I've just got a bit of a sore arm. Other than that, I'm just excited to not be quite as worried. And you're feeling okay? Fantastic. Feeling great. <laughs> and you're doing our show? Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> Damini, come on. You need to talk about you know everybody is really really interested in <laughs> and what you do with this um, research what PhD in psychology. So I am a PhD student at the University of Hertfordshire and I do a lot of research around migrational mental health specifically with the South Asian diaspora. So yeah, that's that's really what I do. Uh, apart from that. I have a blog called The Coping Club, so we talk a lot about mental health, health in general, and yeah. What is it called again? The Coping Club. The Coping Club. Yeah, we started... What, why is that name, Coping Club? I think we started it mainly because, you know, uh, the pandemic uh, has been a bit too stressful for all of us, really. So I think we all have been trying to cope and thrive as human beings, and that is the reason why we called it the Coping Club. So what can they, what, what can they find in your um, blog? Okay, so good advice on nutrition, because we have a registered nutritionist uh, who works with us. We have a couple of medical students, so debunking a lot of medical myths and um, things about mental health, uh, which is written by me, and also a lot of resources on women's health. That's amazing. Yeah. Well done. OK, good. Thank you. <laughs> this show is quite important for you both, isn't it? Mm. It's quite close to your heart. Yeah. Even though you both are in different fields, you're not 
experts in the field, mm. Not at all. but you are expert in what you did, and it worked for you both. Yeah. Raisa, how much weight you lost in, in what period? So from January 2018, I just finally found a diet that actually worked for me um, and it was sort of going keto with intermittent fasting because suddenly I was able to lose a lot of weight very quickly which I found very motivating. And how much were you before you started? I was about 68, 69 kilos at my 69 heaviest. Kilos. Yeah and then at my lowest sort of sticking to it I got down to about 53, 52 kilos. So that must be kind of right weight for you isn't it? Probably as in finally not overweight but okay. completely healthy. Before we go into more detail mm -hmm. how come you continue this diet? What so at any point you as a click to this is a diet for you <laughs> for me so i don't really like carbohydrates that much um i don't have a sweet tooth even though asian culture like i think our desserts are amazing um so for me it, when someone told me oh here's a diet where you can eat as much like cheese and meat and fish and eggs as you want and you'll feel more full and you'll still lose weight at the same time I was just like, yes, yes, let me try this. I can do this. How much did you lose in first week? In the first week, I dropped four kilos. And that four kilos initial, you dropped in? Like, sudden four kilos of weight loss. Even if people are like, it's just water weight. Even if it is water weight, that's a really good motivation to keep going to if you drop going. four kilos like that. Damini, <laughs> how much did you lose? Well, I started with around 130 kilos. You were 130 kilos yeah, in that I body? Yep. Oh, right, okay. I know, it's a bit <laughs> shocking. But I started in 2017, September, right after my graduation, and then I uh, became like 72 kilos, so over 50 kilos. Of so you off. lost all 50 kilos? Yeah. Yeah. And still going. <laughs> still and going still on. going, yeah? Yeah. So it's not happened suddenly, but you have to. Take Absolutely it not. It's, it's some time, yeah? Yeah. So even if you lose half a kilo or even if it's less than half a kilo, that's still a loss and you've got to accept it. Or even if you don't lose anything on that particular week, it's fine. You know, you just got to go full throttle and it's good, I think. Um, so yeah, it, it was hard work. It was difficult. But uh, I tried to stick through it despite of trying everything out there. Anyway, this is a live program, so if you have any questions or suggestions, you can call us on 0203 515 5788, or you can write to us healthtalk at intv.co.uk, and you can follow us on our Facebook link, Health Talk with, um, Iron Health Talk with Dr. Akram, or you could follow us on our YouTube link, Health Talk with Dr. Akram. Let's go back to the subject. Okay. So we talked about how much weight you guys lost. Okay, are there any magic diet, the best diet you can tell our viewers? What do you think? Okay, um, we're going to join a caller already. Hello. 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 Yes, please go ahead. Uh, welcome to Iron Health Talk. There's a small child there. Oh, my God, yeah. The small child shouldn't be on a diet. Yeah, no. <laughs> no. No diet I'm, for children. I don't okay. recommend okay. a diet I think for a baby. The caller probably, I think, uh, doesn't have anyone to leave the child, and I bet she will come back okay. to us anyway. Until then, we will, let's talk about, are there any magic diet? No. No. There's no magic diet, No, is there? no. I think the magic is in you. So it's all about how you decide to go forward with this journey. It's very difficult, but you've got to be resilient. You've got to push through because, you know, when you, as Raisa said, that when she started a diet, she obviously lost four kilos in the first week, but it's not gonna happen in the second week. It's not gonna happen in the third week. You know, you're never gonna lose anything, but still people think that, well, after the third week, if I haven't lost anything, well, this diet is not working for me, which is wrong. It's in fact, in my opinion, it's great if you haven't put on any weight or if you haven't lost anything, that's good. 
then you know maybe in the fifth week you will lose something so you need to be consistent very consistent and keep doing it take a right diet and do it right mm -hmm. and keep doing it consistent resilient and also you've got to understand that it's not an instantaneous process there are, there are lots of videos in youtube it says okay you can lose this much of weight in one week you can lose mm. the next week that doesn't work isn't it most generally people i think anything that promises that you will definitely lose a certain amount of weight by doing a certain set thing or eating in a certain way you can't really rely on that just based off the fact that they're giving those promised results because everyone's different every body is different different we've we were speaking and even we've tried the same things and they worked out very differently for both of us. Yeah, that's really important. That's why I will talk more about it because yeah. you both tried the same thing and mm -hmm. it didn't work. Yeah. Similar, yeah. isn't it? Because the body is different, the food is different, the genetics is different. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So you have to choose what is best for you, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, let's see. What made you guys think that you, lo you needed to lose weight? Um, for me, I'll be honest, I wish that I had some sort of deep internal motivation, but for me it was just the clothes that I wanted to wear did not look the way that I wanted them to look on me, so I decided, okay, well, if I want them to look that way, I feel like I need to be thinner. And it just gave me a lot more confidence because I finally felt like I looked the way that I wanted to. And I'm not saying that that's the, a good motivator or that that should be everyone's motivation, but I think a lot of people will probably relate to that exact feeling of like, I just want to look better so I'll feel better about myself, as opposed to the more noble sort of health-related reasons. By losing weight, do you feel ease? Do you feel um, your movements are easy walking around? Do you feel anything different? Um, I mean, I, had, I feel like I have a lot more energy uh, when I'm on right. keto. And I don't know, I think maybe because I'm more confident, I feel as though I enjoy myself a lot more. But then I don't know how much of that is weight loss and how much of that is a mental mm. sort of link that I've created yeah. myself. Damini, so have you been slim in your life or you've been uh, like in slightly higher weight all your life how, how come what made you decide that you that suddenly you thought okay I'm going to go for a diet I'm going to lose some weight well being to be very honest I have been a chubby child all my life and uh, you know I grew up being bullied about my weight about how I looked and everything so it was um, that's how it really was for me growing up uh, but also it's um, the fact that I really wanted to dress up, look good, and you know, um, I felt that if I looked a certain way, it would help me with my career. Um, it would help me in terms of my health because I had polycystic ovary, polycystic ovarian syndrome. So being overweight can be extremely detrimental for me. So I had to lose all that weight. I had absolutely no choice, really. Thank you very much. We're going to talk more about it. Uh, before that, uh, we can, we're reaching for our time for a short break. Anyway, if anybody joining the program today, we're talking about what is the best diet for you. And we have two specialists and who had gone through this, and uh, they're going to talk all about their experience. So be with us, and we're going to see, see you shortly after the break. Hi, welcome back to Iron Health Talk with Dr. Akram. Today we are talking about what is the best diet for you. So talking about diet, if anyone joined, so far we have discussed the basic things about diet and we have two experts who had gone through the diet process themselves. It's Dr. Raisa Islam and uh, Ms. Damini Larchand. And uh, let's go back to Damini. Damini, there is a taboo in the, in the community and people call fat girl and all these things. How do you feel about, did you go through these things? Most certainly, I, I grew up with this um, whole fat shaming sort of life. I've been fat shamed at school, 
by my family, friends, you know, just name it. I've always been called the words moti, which means fat in Hindi, or, you know, name it. I've always been called that. Um, or I've been called a baby elephant, which is really rude. But people don't understand that it hits the emotions. And the fact that, you know, I, while growing up, uh, I've, have, I've always been restricted of certain foods, like, um, you know, I can't have a packet of crisp, I can't have chocolate, I can't enjoy certain foods, which is a bit, you know, sad growing up. But, um, you know, it was difficult for me. Like, my mum used to put me into different sorts of diets, like Atkins, meal replacement shakes, and all those sorts of things. So when you're deprived of certain food, right, you go back into that pit of overeating, and that's really what happened to me. I found comfort from all this bullying with my food, but it was the same food that was hurt, harming me. So, so you were finding comfort with food? Yeah, precisely. Precisely. I was finding all my comfort with that food. And so is, is that something to get the anger or whatever going on outside? Or is it all just in your mind? So you never thought? It wasn't. It's it a wasn't, craving in your It's a craving. It's, it's a not craving. even the anger or anything. It's just like you get upset, right? And you just, yeah. you know, there is, there is research that suggests that um, you know, if you go have a piece of chocolate, it increases your dopamine, and dopamine is known to, um, is, it's, it's called the happy hormone. It, it increases your happiness or, you know, your serotonin levels go up, and that's also what chocolates promote. So, you know, me going and reaching out to a chocolate just comforted me, and it's just that it's linked to the whole neurochemistry uh, of your brain, and there was nothing that, uh, you know, could be done in that sense. But also, like, the fact that people don't understand the struggles of losing weight. Because whenever you walk to a family function as a South Asian, you would have people being like, well, you need to lose weight. They never ask you, and never, ever have they asked you, how are you? You're always viewed as this fat girl. Fat girl. Yeah. And despite of having lost all this weight, I still feel there's a small element of that fat girl that exists in me. <laughs> I think I think no one can take that away from me. Away from you. I, yeah, because I've always been fat. I've been fat since the age of two. So you know, no one can. That's really important. Yeah. That you you've been fat since like age of two. Yeah, yeah. And why I lost my weight was because a I have a diagnosis of uh, PCOS, as I've previously mentioned. And also, uh, I kind of got my senses when I was shopping for my graduation dress. And I couldn't find a really good dress for my graduation. And now, I would have people saying that, well, you are you know, talking against fat girls or people, people who are plus size. No, I'm not against you. Well, I've been chubby all my life. I've been a plus size girl all my life. So. I'm not against that, but I wanted to look good on those pictures. I felt, I felt like I had a low self-esteem on the biggest day of my life. So it just, it was uncomfortable, really. So is that the point you thought that you wanted to lose weight? It was that, and also it was taking, it was affecting my, you know, the rapport I had with a lot of my colleagues, colleagues. professionally, um, especially because I am training to become a research psychologist. And the sad part about pursuing a career in psychology is you're often quite, you're often judged, really. Uh, right. I think it's just because we know a lot too much about the mind and then you know we start judging people from how they look how they behave because we just keep decoding a lot of things so yeah I had to present myself a certain way just to assert value in my field and you know the sad part is you may be cognitively um, blessed but if you don't have the physical aspect, people don't really respect you in the field, and that was that was also one of the reasons why I had to lose weight. Right. Yeah. But anyway, this is interesting because you proved that you could lose weight. But you know, generally, you know, I, I can't remember. You know, my my Iranian friends at school, they used to say uh, stomach is like something like your socks. Yeah. The more you put in, the bi the bigger it becomes. If you take out, it shrinks. 
Yeah. So if you eat more, the stomach can accommodate more. Yeah. If you don't eat much, your stomach shrinks. And, and when you fill up the stomach, if it's big or small, that's the time you are, your hunger stops there, isn't it? That's it's, the, right. it's the fullness it goes to your brain. It says, okay, you don't need to eat any more food. So if you keep eating more and more, your stomach is big and you won't eat more. Yeah. So that's probably one of the things. That's probably one of the things, but it's also the fact is that I had a small appetite growing up. I never, I, I, I don't, people may assume that I was fat, so I would eat a lot. But no, I've, I don't generally eat a lot. Uh, I eat, in fact, lesser than a lot of people. A lot of people. Yeah, so which is now again very contradictory. <laughs> there's, there's another, yeah, there's another one is the metabolism. Yes, so. Everybody is different. Some correct. people are fast, uh, they have the fast metabolism. They break down anything, they can eat anything, they, they are slim all their lives. <laughs> correct. It? Lucky. So in my case, I think it's just that because I'm half Northwestern Indian, so my father's family are from Sindh and generally people from Sindh and Punjab regions they are on the bigger side Punjab is, yeah so they, they generally are on the bigger side and it's genetics again so I think maybe my family metabolism isn't so great on my paternal side I don't I think I haven't taken any bits from my maternal side in terms of uh, my physical aspects but yeah that's the other aspect, isn't it? Because our genetics being used to Correct. starve in mm -hmm. our ancestors' time. That's right. Because the food was not easily available. That's right. So the, our genetics got used to that kind of lifestyle. So whenever it had food, it thinks, wow, yeah. I need to save now. Because mm -hmm. never know, the genetics doesn't know that you might get food again. But now right. food is plenty available. So yeah. People can find food anytime. So, but genetics still not adjusted to it. That's why yeah. the obesity and diabetes is really rampant in South Asia now. That's India right. is going to be the highest uh, uh, the, the diabetic pa patients living in the country in the world soon. I wouldn't be surprised uh, yeah. about that because um, food is readily available as you very well pointed out but also the fact that you know when you're talking about food you have all this readily available food and now they are called fast food. Fast food. And because life is busy... And that's got high calories, isn't it? Yes. Absolutely. High calories, completely dangerous for yourself. I, I know it is easy to get access to them. They are quite affordable when you look at it. But the other issue is that, you know, you can't look at convenience at the cost of your health in the long run. It may be convenient for, it may save you time that like, you know, going out and buying yourself a burrito may probably save you some time. It may save you 15, 20 minutes of your time, but going down the line, it's gonna cut down that time from your life. Crisps a lot, got a, got a lot of sugar and salt as well. And Absolutely, and I'm, I'm I'm really against those meal deals. If I'm being very honest. Meal deal, yeah, that's right. I hate them. <laughs> exactly. So you get a sandwich. Yeah. And you get a Coke. Yeah. And you get a crisp. That, that's kind of a lunch, isn't it? In a, like office lunch. It's a quintessential <laughs> British yeah. lunch. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Good point. <laughs> Raisa, okay. Yes, hello. What worked for you? What kind of diet and why? Um, so for me, uh, I needed a diet that I would stick to, which meant something that worked for weight loss and something that I could maintain in the long run. Um, so like I said, keto gave me access to the foods that I enjoyed anyway. Um, and the things that it told me to restrict were things that I was kind of okay with restricting. Okay. Um, in keto diet, what can you eat? So it's very low carb. While I was losing weight, so very, I, low very low carbohydrate. Very low carbohydrate. You can't eat rice. You can't no. eat non bread. No. All these things. There are okay. cauliflower equivalents to all of the above. Uh -huh. That and so I would not recommend this if you don't like cauliflower because. So <laughs> what can you eat? Meat. Um, yes. Any amount of meat. So not any amount of meat. So the breakdown of my. Um, the macronutrients in my diet were, I think it was 80% fat, 
15% protein in order to hit my daily goal of protein that my body needed, and then 5% carbohydrate, which equated to just under 20 grams of carbohydrates a day. And in addition to that, I was doing intermittent fasting to allow my body to switch over. So you're doing over. a keto diet and yeah. intermittent fasting, yeah. right? Okay, let's explain about keto diet. Like okay. What can you eat in, mm. in uh, meat? Like how much, how many grams of meat at how much? It varies for each different person. So someone who's... For you, how much? For me, how much was I eating? I think about 80, half a 80 grams a day. No, much more than that, because you have to have something to eat the fat with. Um, it's mostly just you need to hit an acceptable amount of protein to not start breaking down your own muscles. Oh, your muscles, yeah. yeah. Okay. And fat helps to keep you satiated in keto, because you have your own you body mean fat? store of fat. What do you mean? Like, um, so what, for me, I things? use things like uh, ghee, butter, ghee? certain types of oil, so like avocado oil, yep. um, anything that essentially most so diets will tell say you. So generally ghee is uh, not healthy, but no, for no, no. this diet ghee it is works. great. Ghee is great. If you like ghee, keto might be for you. Yeah. Um, yeah, just all of the food that you're generally told don't eat too much. And yeah. like eggs with the yolk, like the best bit of the egg. Um, anything that, everything that I'd grown up thinking, oh no, this is bad for you. Because if you think about the food pyramid, where is fat? It's like that little bit at the top and the bottom is all carbohydrate. Whereas they've seen that actually diabetes, um, obesity, all of these metabolic syndromes have actually skyrocketed as that food pyramid's been introduced with the suggestion that carbohydrates are bad for you and fats, uh, no, carbohydrates are good for you, good fats for you. are bad. Yeah, yeah. Whereas if you look back in um, historical textbooks, for example, uh, it will say that if you want to gain weight, eat pasta, eat rice, eat bread. That's interesting. And that only changed with the introduction of the food pyramid in like, what, the 60s maybe? 60s. Yeah. yeah. And since then, if you think about the diseases that have gone up, diabetes, yeah, it's hypertension, exactly as obesity, a, as metabolic that's the time is, um, the diabetes and everything yeah. went up, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And I, obviously, correlation may not always be causation, but facts were deliberately manipulated at the time to make you think that fats are bad and carbs are good when are good. it's not necessarily the case. Because that's the time we have started producing more potatoes and, and uh, mm. agriculture has started developing a lot. And uh, probably it's all to do with that time, isn't it? 1960s, 70s. Mm. Yeah. That's interesting. Well, so where can they find a keto diet? So for me, um, there was a lot of research, like online research involved. There are now so many resources on keto. And the thing is, there's... Are there any website they can find? I mean, YouTube has some great information. YouTube has them. Yeah, I think YouTube and is you, probably the best And if you one. watch YouTube and you could mm. choose how much you need for you as well? There, I would look into the macronutrients required. In particular, I think that one of the mistakes I made initially was not eating enough protein. I found my energy flagging, not eating, I mean, I ate a lot of vegetables, so I was okay on that side. But um, the headaches that you can sometimes get, so I discovered things like adding electrolytes and salt into my water. Okay, we'll okay. talk a little bit more about mm. it. Until then, mm -hmm. uh, today we're talking about what is the best diet for you. Mm -hmm. So we have started explaining about keto diet. This is like high protein diet and you don't have to take too much carbohydrate like rice, bread, things like that, but we're going to see you after a short break. Hi, welcome to, back to Iron Health Talk with Dr. Akram. Today to, we're talking about what is the best diet for you. So far we talked uh, uh, with our two specialists on the field, Dr. Raisa Islam and Ms. Damini Lachan, and they are giving their expertise. What have they gone through and uh, how they felt about it? Okay, let's go back to Raisa. Raisa, mm. we're talking about keto diet, mm -hmm. pros and cons. What are the pros and what are the cons? So the biggest pros for me were the fact that I could eat until I was full. So, so I you could eat until you're full? Yeah, I had a really big problem with um, getting really, really hungry at night. So if I was on calorie restrictive diets or just anything that I tried, I'd be so good until like seven, eight o'clock and then the hunger would kick in. And so by 
10 to midnight, that's it. The fridge is raided, anything in there is gone um, because I've eaten it. How does it work? So keto essentially switches your body from using glucose as its primary energy source to being able to use the ketones released from fat. So your body will always prioritize the, uh, prioritize carbohydrates as a fuel source. With keto, you eat very limited carbohydrates so that you burn through that energy very quickly and then your body switches to using fat. So the pros are that because you have your own supplies of fat, when your body is fat adapted and you start to utilize fat as an energy source, it's so much longer and slow releasing. So this fat has been used for your breathing, talking, walking, doing your natural things, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So, and it made me feel really good when I was completely in ketosis I felt like I had a lot more energy and again by some chance it didn't it just made me not hungry overnight I was able to do my intermittent fasting which obviously pro also prolongs the amount of time that your body's in ketosis before you give it even minimal carbohydrates to knock you out of it okay let's go back to um, have you had any side effects quickly um, I lost a lot of hair which was I, I mean that was devastating um, but it, it came back. It came back. It came back. Uh, but initially, I mean, that was that was terrifying as a, as a fellow woman. I'm yeah. sure you can relate. Like That's you're true. just like, what is this? It's all you can think about. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I realised I was quite deplete in a lot of uh, nutrients. M nutrients. So nutrients, when I started yeah. incorporating those back, those taking back. supplements. Mm -hmm. It came back. That's a good point. So if they yeah. go for keto diet, they have to yeah. look into these yeah. nutrients as well. Yeah. Before starting keto, there's a lot of research that you have to do um, because it is so different to the types of diet that we're told about, um, especially if you're diabetic or if you have any other sort of key medical conditions. I particularly worry about people with diabetes because obviously it affects insulin if you're not having carbohydrates. So you definitely need to look into that, maybe speak to your doctor if you're considering starting it. Excellent. Let's talk about intermittent fasting. Mm. That's quite interesting. It's mm. very easy to do. Mm. And I have done a, a special uh, YouTube program as well on that. If anybody is interested, you could go to Health Talk with Dr. Akram YouTube channel and you can watch it uh, just as before we start. Okay, mm -hmm. let's explain a little bit about this intermittent fasting. Okay, so intermittent fasting there are different types of intermittent fasting. So there are forms where you only have a specific eating window. So you have a few hours in the day where you um, are able to eat. And then for say 16 to 18, some people even do say the whole, like 20 so hours. 16 hours you, you eat. can eat? No. no, eight hours you can oh, eat. Eight hours you, you can, can eat, eat. okay, and that's fine. 16, <laughs> you're fasted. It gives your body time okay. to use to stop burning fat burning instead of fat, glucose because yeah. you So what time food. is the best time to start this fasting? It depends on your lifestyle. Again, like we were saying before, diets vary person to yeah. person. Yeah. I personally prefer to set my window so that I could still go out for meals with my friends. I mean, this was pre-lockdowns. Um, I set it so that my final meal would be between 8 and 10. Oh, so you could go out So and I could eat. go and still eat with my eat. friends yeah. um, or have dinner with my family. It, I. So for me, it worked better to have that window later on. So you would fast mm. after 10 o'clock, let's say. Yeah, so say if I had something Then from later. there, another 16 hours. Yeah, 16 to, sometimes I would just stay fasted throughout work. And because you can still have things like black coffee, um, tea of anything. Tea, yeah. coffee, water. water. Yeah, um, anything that doesn't, isn't going to cause an insulin spike, essentially. Milk is not allowed, sugar no, is not allowed. You can't have milk, of course, you can't have sugar. You can, if you're doing keto, sometimes put a little bit of cream, cream. into your coffee if you really can't tolerate black yeah. coffee. Um, I got really But they really advise you coffee. to drink a lot of water as well. Yeah. So you, what you're doing is, uh, eight hours you can eat during a 24 <laughs> hour cycle. The 16 hours you fast, right? Mm -hmm. So this one you could either, it depends your habit. You mm. could start from eight o'clock in the night mm. to Did when it comes to 12, about twelve o'clock. It's lunch time. So you are missing <laughs> just your breakfast. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Basically, you having you can have your tea. You can have your uh, coffee. You can have everything else. Yeah, I do this quite often on long weekends, <laughs> but it works very well. Easy. Mm. Isn't it? You have done this as well, isn't it? 
I do it. Um, and I think it's it's quite easy on the body, especially on the gut, when you yeah. think about it. Because, like, you know, we... And given now that we're all at home, you, know, yeah. you tend to reach out to the food in your food cupboard, really. So it's just to give that tummy of yours some rest. Some you know? rest. And it's, it's good, I personally think. Like, I skip breakfast mm -hmm. and I have like, my lunch and dinner. Do you, do, do you like to feel hungry? I have the kick, you know, when I feel I that don't. hungry. Do you feel happy? I don't really feel happy when I'm hungry. Yeah. I, I enjoy the Initially, feeling of for sometimes you feel after you know when you eat something after you've been hungry for yeah. a while, you're just like, oh yes, I'm yeah. so excited to eat this. You love it, is yeah. I, I get happy to eat food. <laughs> eat food. Yeah, yeah, and I was reading about it and it says that you have to feel this mm. uh, this um, waves of hunger, mm. you know. Yeah. So that's a really good yeah. feeling and But I think when you get hungry you feel and if you go a little longer, you feel a little irritated. Hungry. Hungry. Hunger. Hungry. Hungry. <laughs> Angry. Bless <laughs> hungry. Yeah. Hungry. Hungry. Yeah. So I think the day is if I'm mm. really hungry, mm. I don't think I'd be able to work better. Well, I'll tell you a good story. You know, um, a few years back, it was six, seven years back, I was walking, I was doing a charity work in mm. Sri Lanka. So we walked from the north of Sri Lanka to south. It's about um, 28 days. We walked about 800 odd kilometers. And at one point, I was working with an uh, Aboriginal guy. You know, he was this, oh, wow. uh, this oh. guy. Yeah, he's an Aboriginal person. Yeah. So I had a chance to walk with him like 20 odd kilometers. Yeah. So in this time, you know, they had lots of food, drinks, and everything was freely available for these walkers. So I was drinking, eating, so fine, happy. And this guy, the whole way through, he did not eat anything. So at one point, I asked him, shall I get you some water? No. Shall I get you some milk? No. I said, no, 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 no. He kept walking. Oh, wow. Initially, he didn't talk to me much. You know, they, they don't trust you very much. But this walk, it like, opened him up. And after that, he said, you know, we don't eat like that, you guys. I said, what do you eat then? What is your breakfast? No. What is your lunch? No. What is your dinner? No. We eat when you feel hungry. Oh. So they eat. When they feel hungry, they go hunting. Mm. If, they get, um, if they get something, they come and eat. If they don't get, they just... I think we listen to our tongues a lot more. And we eat to satisfy our cravings that's the thing mm. and we don't eat when we're hungry and mm. I think it's important to understand what your body needs more than what your tongue needs Thun <laughs> exactly <laughs> Tommy, okay what didn't work for you with these diets okay so keto must have worked for Risa but it didn't work for me um, the reason why it didn't work for me is because of the high levels of fat and I think maybe my body didn't need that much of fat and I don't think it was able to go in a state of ketosis to be able to burn all that fat as you pre very well explained. So my body was not able to do that. Uh, I've tried Atkins uh, when I was young. Mm. Uh, that's uh, like you've got to eat high levels, of, high levels of protein and less fat and low carbs. But what happens is you again go and reach out for that uh, lovely piece of bread <laughs> with peanut butter. Uh, then I've tried paleo. Paleo comes in different forms, really, but there are some forms of paleo that restricts you from having So you had dairy. paleo. It is called paleontologist. Yes. It starts from dinosaurs. there. Yes, that's how it is. It, it's a, it's a, this diet is the, what our ancestors ate. Correct, correct. Mm. So that so means... Everything they ate. Kurakan and what, what is it called? Uh, uh, millets. Millets. Yeah. These are the things they Millets ate. and ragi, yes. Ragi. So you are dependent on very whole um, sort of carbs, like really good carbs for your body. But... On the other hand, there are some paleo diets which restricts you from carbs. carbs. There are some forms of paleo diets that restricts you from dairy. So it's like, what do I eat now? <laughs> so don't go with that. It works for a lot of people, but there are some people, there are, it doesn't work for me because- but You did some Slimming World as well. Yes. What is that? Okay, so it's, now Slimming World, it's like, how do we explain? It's like a group of women, I mean, there are a lot of women who join the group, but even there are men. 
and a group of people who come to lose weight and they encourage one another. So you go in for these sessions every week, go have yourself weighed in, and then you get an encouragement from everybody. Now, because everybody has the same goal of wanting to lose weight, wanting to be healthy. Uh, the nice thing about Slimming World was that I didn't have to restrict myself from what I was eating. And when I started the diet, I had people looking at me and they were like, are you on a diet because you're eating potatoes? I was eating potatoes. I was eating chocolates, but I was eating chocolates in a limited quantity. I was eating potatoes in a limited quantity. What were you not allowed to eat in semi -work? High fats. So high fats. Okay, My let's food. go back quickly. <laughs> we got two or three minutes left. And what worked for you? If you could bullet point It was point the slimming them. world. Frankly speaking, it, tra it, it transpired to become a lifestyle choice. And I'm not endorsing slimming world, trust me. I went for those sessions for probably two months. I gave it up, I went home and took that diet. Okay, can you break down what you eat? Okay, so I eat my rice, I eat pasta. How much, not too much? Or? Not too much, no. I think if you, if you look at a plate, now let's divide that into a pie chart kind yeah. of scenario. So if, you do, so if we divide our plate into four sections, one section is for rice, a very small section. Let's take two sections for vegetables and one section for protein. So that's really how it worked. Uh, also, in terms of the sugars, you can take some sugars, but you've got to limit yourself. So I used to limit myself to one piece of chocolate after my lunch and one piece of chocolate after my dinner. And the best thing was getting those treat-sized chocolates, those bite sized Small ones. Yeah, that worked and then hiding it all away. So it was like <laughs> training my mind. Excellent. A few yeah. seconds. Mm -hmm. Any advice for the public? Fraser. Find what works for you because there's so much information. There are so many different diets. Something will work for you. You just have to keep the end goal in mind and f keep what motivates you in mind. Damini. I think um, the more you limit yourself and you say that, well, um, I'm on a diet, I'm on a diet, it's not going to work. So just think that I am on this journey to becoming healthy a lot more healthier trust me it'll become a lifestyle choice and you will stick to it so you take you telling them make it a habit make yeah. it a lifestyle that yeah. is your lifestyle it will take 21 days but trust exactly. me yeah. you will live with thank it thank you very much life. guys <laughs> it's amazing to have you here and and your experience really worth and you have given them exactly right thank you very much um, Raisa Islam and Damini Lachant you know, being in our show. And uh, unfortunately, we have to finish this show <laughs> coming to the end. Uh, thank you very much for being with us. If we have missed anything, we will try to post more stuff in the YouTube. Please watch there. And um, until we see you in a similar program, look after yourself. Thank you for being with us in this uh, special Iron Health Talk with Dr. Akram. We'll see you there. Next program, take care, look after yourself.